Hello, I'm Anika from Made to Sew and welcome to day five of the Beginner's Crash Course in Sewing. Unfortunately, we are at our last day now, but I hope you have enjoyed the other sessions that we've put on for you so far. So what are we going to cover in today's tutorial? Well I really wanted to go over some of the accuracy issues that you might find that you come across on your sewing journey. So teaching you some tips, tricks and techniques that I use to sort of make things slightly easier and to get a better result. We're going to be looking at sewing curves and corners as well as matching up seams and a little bit of hand stitching as well. I wanted to show you how to complete a hand running stitch, which is a sort of standard basting stitch. And then finally onto pressing, because that is really important when you are making projects. So join me back here and we'll get started. We're going to start by looking at curves and how to sew curves. Now, whether you're working with a garment like we are here or an upholstery or home decor project, the same rules will apply. So we've cut out our fabric, we've marked any of the notches that the pattern has recommended we mark, and we're ready to start pinning them together. Now, if you find that you may find it difficult, the actual sewing of the curve and the accuracy of the curve sewing, because it is important that you do stitch on what is the stitching line, which is 1.5 centimetres, 5 eighths in from the edge. If you don't stitch on the stitching line, you may find that the garment or item would be too large or too small or it wouldn't fit in the correct areas. So one thing you can do is actually draw on your stitching lines like I've done here. Now all you would need is a ruler or a tape measure and you would measure in your 5 eighths, 1.5 centimetres, and use chalk, like a little chalk pen like this, or you could use a pen that comes off with um, air after time or with water and do this on the wrong side of your fabric. Obviously you don't want to damage the fabric or for this to come through to the right side. But you may find as a beginner that this can really help by marking these lines onto the fabric. So now for pinning together. We're going to start by pinning our notches and we're going to put our right sides of our garment together and pin the notch. Now the notches will be placed in specific places so that the ease is in the right area of the garment. So I'm going to be looking from one side to the other to find where my notches are. And if you have decided to actually draw your stitching lines on, now what I would recommend you do here is actually pin through the stitching line and check it's come out on the stitching line on the other side. So your pins are going to actually be sitting on your stitching line and when you're sewing you won't need to worry about where this edge is but you will need to worry about where the needle is on this line and therefore the pins will be holding this stitching line together. So notch is now pinned, next we're going to pin the bottom edge and then we'll be pinning the top edge of the garment. Obviously if you haven't got these lines and you don't want to draw these lines on that's not a problem. I'd recommend pinning in the seam allowance as I suggested before. We're pinning from the bottom as we're going to be sewing from the bottom up and our pins are parallel to our edge here, our seam allowance edge. And then we're going to pin our top edge together. And then we can start looking at the ease and the distribution of the ease around the curve. Now what you need to do here is you need to work from middle point to middle point. And this goes for any curve or any situation where you may need to ease two fabrics together. So middle point to middle point, again I'm going to be pinning on my stitching line, checking it's gone through on both sides because I have drawn that on. And then I'm working with my next point, middle point to middle point. I'm making sure that that fits. And again up here. Now obviously you will need more pins for a curve than you will on a straight seam, but please just put as many pins as you feel comfortable working with to make sure that everything is sitting nice and flat ready to sew. Now one thing I do want to point out as well is that a garment or anything you're making won't necessarily sit flat. That's nothing to worry about, that's because you are making a 3D item. It will never sit completely flat and you'll have fabric sort of buckling in certain places. As long as your edges are together, so the seam allowance edges together here, or your stitching lines are together, you are doing the right thing. Okay, so what I would recommend if you are a complete beginner is that you baste or tack this before taking it to the machine. So join me back here and I'll show you how to do that. 
So now I wanted to show you how to actually baste or tack a seam together. And this can really help if you're a beginner because you'll find that you can remove the pins so that you can actually position this through the machine much easier. And you can also find that because you will have basted it or tacked it together, it won't shift, it won't move, and you will be able to sew along your stitching line and get fabulous results. So how do you do that? Well, you can see the little stitches that I've completed here. Now you're going to need a needle, and obviously the needle does depend on the fabric you're working with. I would recommend, majority of the time, you probably want a finer needle than you've picked up. Um, most of my customers come in with a needle with a massive eye because that's what they can see through. So maybe invest in a needle threader if you have problems threading a smaller needle. And some thread. Now, if you're just starting off, it doesn't really matter what thread you use. You can buy specific um, basting thread, but honestly, anything will do. I would recommend, though, that you choose a colour that's not dissimilar to the fabric that you're working with. You want something that you can see so that you can remove the stitches afterwards, but you also want something that if, say, your stitches got caught in the fabric and you found it difficult to remove, you wouldn't end up with tufts of red thread everywhere, which doesn't look good on a finished garment or project. So, We've got our thread um, through our needle here. We started off by either tying a knot or by going backwards sort of over yourself and we're going to start stitching. Let me pull this through so that you can see. So we're going to be stitching along the stitching line. Now I find this is the most accurate way to do it, although it is more difficult to remove the stitches afterwards, if you stitch in the seam lines you can still have a little bit of shift. It does depend what you're doing, if you were doing a straight line and maybe using this on a fabric that was just a little bit slippy and needed help to be put together, then you could do it you know, inside of your um, stitching line, but I would recommend if it's for accuracy it is better to do it on the stitching line and then tackle the taking out with a pair of tweezers. So, we're going to be doing a basic running stitch. That's what a basting stitch is, or a tacking stitch. It's a running stitch. And the running stitches should be about a quarter of an inch, um, five millimetres in length. So, we're going to go down here, five millimetres from where we came out, and then, again, five millimetres, a quarter of an inch, and back up. And we're going to be positioning it on the stitching line, and we can check that the other side, that we've hit the stitching line as well and we can pull that through. So I'll do another one slowly for you. So five millimeters, a quarter of an inch from where we came out, we go in and then along again, another five millimeters, quarter of an inch and out. And we pull that through. And you'll find that as you get better at doing this, you should be able to go in five millimeters, quarter of an inch up and do it in succession. So we're gonna go down, up, down, up, which will make it quicker. Obviously removing the pins as we go. Okay, let's try that again. So, down, up, down, up. Okay, and one more time. Down, up, and just ignore the pins when you when you get close to them. It's always best to sort of stitch first with the pin in if you can, and then obviously once you've got past the pin, you can remove it, just to make sure that you're not shifting the fabric in any way. And then again, and when we get to the end, I'd recommend tying a knot, um, or going backwards over yourself. Obviously, if, if I stop here and show you how to do that, so to tie a knot, we would just literally tie a knot, and I tend to wiggle mine right down to the bottom, put my finger on it and pull. And I've got a knot right at the bottom of my thread there. If you would prefer to go over yourself, all that means is that you're just going to do a stitch on top of yourself about two or three times. And all that will do is, is hold the thread there as well. Just like that. Okay, so I'll let you baste your or tack your seam together and then join me at the machine and we can get sewing it. So now we're going to sew the curve on the machine. We're going to start, as always, by holding onto our threads and positioning the needle into the fabric. And then we're going to start sewing. Obviously, we would go forwards and backwards as well to seal the stitch. And I'm just going to be working with the standard 2.5 millimeter stitch. One thing I would recommend when sewing curves is that you really just want to do it very, very slowly. So if you do have speed control on your machine, then this is the best time to use it. 
Now, as you can see, we are going to be following our basting line, which is also the line that we drew onto our fabric as the stitching line. And I promise this is much easier than using um, the guide or the seam gauge here or trying to guide up in line with our 5 8 1.5 centimeters on the plate here. It is easier to draw this line on and I would really recommend it if you are a beginner. Now, the key is, as I said, slowly and also to make sure that on this line that we have basted that the fabric stays flat around the curves. So the way I tend to hold my fabric is with my left hand here, I tend to really feel and make sure that there's no puckers on the top side. And then with the right hand, I'm actually going to be feeling and checking that I'm not feeding in any puckers. And I tend to sort of use a little bit of a motion to, to flick any puckers or things out the way, use my nails if I need to, to really get rid of them before I feed it through the machine. So as I said, the most important thing is that where you're stitching, on this stitching line, there are no puckers. If you feel puckers on this side or this side, that doesn't matter. It's the stitching line that matters and that is important when you're doing this. So work your way on your curves, complete them slowly and practice. And um, you know, make yourself some curves that you need to sew. That's the best way is just to practice. And you will find that you do feel more confident working with them in the future. Obviously you're going to be sewing in a thread that matches your fabric. I've got a thread that you can see. <laughs> when you get to the end, we'll be going backwards and forwards again. You may have a lock stitch on your machine, that's fine. The needle should be raised. The foot lifted and obviously you can wiggle the hand wheel if you need to to release the threads and cut off the stitch. And there we have it, we've sewn the curve on your sewing machine. Join me back here and we'll take out your basting stitches. As you can see we've got a beautifully stitched curve here. So what do we need to do next? We need to remove the basting or tacking stitch that we put in in the first step. So we need an unpicker for that job. Now, how to use an unpicker? Okay, so what we need to do is you've got the little pointed area of the unpicker here. Now you need to put this little point underneath a stitch and you can use, there's a cutter right there to cut the thread. Now, if you find that you have basted not on the stitching line, you should find that you can pull it from the start or the end of the basting and it will come out. However, because for accuracy, um, and I really do believe this will help with the majority of projects, is actually to baste on the stitching line, you may find that you need to sort of individually pluck each of them out of the seam. And this is why I would recommend that you use a colour that doesn't show up if you weren't, be able, weren't able to get them out. So choose a colour, say we, I'm working here with a navy, maybe I would choose sort of a, a shade, a couple of shades lighter, um, or maybe a black or something like that. So I could still see it, but it wasn't white or red or something that really wasn't going to come out. So I'm just working here and you should be able to cut a few of them and then able to pull it out, just like that. So you would work your way along the entire piece gradually unpicking things. And this is the same if you were to say unpick some of the stitches here. If I show you how to do that, you would use the unpicker and you would go under the stitch and you would unpick and you don't need to unpick every single stitch. You need to sort of unpick maybe say five or six stitches apart because once you've got a little gap in it, you'll find that you can lift it and it will all come out and then you can just pull it off with your fingers. So it's another sort of technique to learn really, and you'll find that you will be doing a lot of unpicking, I'm sure, as you are learning. But hopefully you will find that it is a little bit of enjoyment with it, um, as well as frustration. <laughs> and now I'll leave you so that you can unpick the rest of your basting or tacking stitches along the length of your curve. Please don't unpick the little stitches that we um, have done on the sewing machine. I only wanted to do that as an example to show you how to unpick them. If, say, you made a mistake, you went wrong, or you didn't stitch on the line that we had drawn. Next, we're going to look at sewing corners. So join me back here in a second. So now you should understand how to sew curves. We're moving on to corners, which are very similar in the way that I tend to prepare them. Now, 
Corners, it can be very difficult. You will want to have the same corner. If you've got a garment or a product that has got numerous corners or points to it, they need to all look the same. So how do you get them all the same? Well, I find the easiest way is just like we did with the curb seam, is to draw on our stitching line. Now you only really need to do this around the corner area, so maybe for a couple of inches, five centimeters or so, before the corner and after the corner. And that will be a straight line in line with the seam allowance, so your 1.5 centimeters, five eighths in from the seam allowance as the stitching line. Now this is just an example um, on calico. I will show you on a little bit of um, fabric in a second how to do this. But I just wanted to show you first the drawing. And we will go straight across at the bottom so that you have a corner. However, the one thing that I would recommend when sewing corners is that you don't necessarily go to the corner drop your needle and turn. That is okay for lightweight fabrics, but for heavyweight fabrics, and even really this is a method that I do the majority of the time, is to have one stitch at a diagonal. And I will show you this in better when we are sewing. So I would draw my line this way, draw my line the other way, and then I've actually drawn a little diagonal line across there. So when we're sewing, we're gonna be sewing down and we will stitch one stitch at a diagonal on this line and then sew the other way. So if I show you how to mark that. So this is my little piece of fabric and I'm gonna be using exactly the same method. So I've got myself a ruler here and I'm going to be using a chalk pen. pen. But as I said before, you can use a, a minute marker that comes off with water or air. And I'm gonna be measuring in my five eighths, 1.5 centimeters and drawing my other, st my other stitching line here. So they're going past each other at the bottom there. Okay, so I've got my stitching line one side, stitching line the other side, and then all I'm going to do is hit this bottom point here with a little diagonal so that I remember as I'm coming along that I'm going to be going down, so one stitch at the diagonal and then the rest along this line here. Join me at the machine and I will show you in greater detail how to do this. Now we're going to be sewing the corner that we prepared in the last part of the tutorial. As you can see, we've got our markings in chalk along here. So all we're going to be doing is actually guiding the stitching line that we've marked on into our foot, and so that's in line with the needle. Now on my foot, I've got a tiny little red dot at the front that I can see, and that's going to line up with the needle. So I'm going to be feeding this line into my little red dot. We're gonna start by holding our threads, putting the needle down, and obviously if you were coming up to a corner on a project, you would have probably gone backwards and forwards or locked your stitch further up your project. But we're going to do that now. And we're working on this bit, working with a 2.5 millimeter stitch or two millimeter would be fine. And we're going to continue sewing along, matching the line here up with the little red dot and therefore the needle. Now when you get, say, one inch away from the corner, 2.5 centimetres, we're going to turn our stitch length down to 1.5 millimetres. Now we mentioned this in our tutorial four of this session, and what that does is actually makes it reinforcement around the corner, because a corner or point can take a lot of wear and tear, so the 1.5 will help with that and we're going to continue sewing up to the corner. Now one thing to add, if you've decided that you didn't want to mark your corner on there, maybe for speed, then some machines will actually have a guide going this way that will show when this front piece of fabric here is at the 5 8 1.5 centimeters, so you'll know when to turn the corner. Now I've got a little ridge on my plate there, other machines have got something uh, more linear line or anything that will show you your little marking, so check your manual for that. However, I still do find that you get more consistency with the points by drawing them on. So we're continuing up to that point, and if you find you're getting close and maybe your machine, um, you're still a little bit worried about how quickly you're approaching it, you can use the hand wheel on the side of the machine. If you turn that towards yourself, the machine will stitch a stitch. So you can do a couple of stitches using the hand wheel if you are worried about going past the point. You can also turn the hand wheel backwards if you need to reverse. Okay, so our needle is now down and we're going to lift up our foot. It is 
really important that you make sure the needle is down when you do this so that your fabric doesn't slip and move out of place. We're then going to turn our fabric so that we can sew that single diagonal stitch. And again, I would use the hand wheel to sew one stitch so that you don't jump ahead and sew more than one. Needles down again, we lift our foot and we pivot the fabric. Now, if you found that you didn't want to do the one diagonal stitch and you just wanted to do a right angle, you would do exactly the same thing and pivot one right angle at the same time. And then we're going to continue stitching out, matching up our line with our needle and our little red dot on the front of the foot. Now when you're about an inch, 2.5 centimetres away from the corner, you can bring the stitch length back to the 2 or 2.5 millimetres that you're working with. And we would simply sew out on our line here, or if you're working with a guide or seam gauge on the side, you'll be using that to guide your seam allowance. And we'll continue that all of the way out. We would go backwards and forwards, or you would do a lock stitch to finish. We would lift and we would pull that out and trim that off. And there we can see, we've got a lovely neat corner that is going to be really secure. And if you were to turn this around, because of the one diagonal stitch, you would find that you've got a very neat, even point. So now you've sewn your corner, we need to work out how we're going to actually clip this and cut this down. Now I would have imagined that you would have actually sewn two pieces together. You would have pinned, like we did with the curve, along the line so that the two layers were matched up. And now we're going to need to trim it because this is too bulky, the seam allowance that you've got here, to be able to turn the corner around to get a nice finished point. So what do you need to do? Now you will need a pair of nicely sharp sort of embroidery style scissors and all we're going to literally do is cut off right by the point and this is about an eighth three millimeters from the edge of the point and this is part of the reason why we actually reduced the size of the stitch around the corner because it does help with the reinforcement now we're cutting this off so we've cut off the corner there and you're left with two other corners so we can cut those off too and literally just trim them off until you aren't left with any of the bulk. And I know this is a scary bit. This is the bit that everybody goes, oh really, you really want me to cut that? So please, please don't be worried. Um, and just, you know, it comes with practice, but get the bravery and really, you know, cutting actually will end up producing better results in the long run. Now, depending on what you're making, you may find that you need to trim down all of your seam allowances, but the most important thing to be able to push down that out that corner is to cut off the corner and then cut off the other corners there so that you're going to have a nice corner to turn through when you're done. So now we know how to cut corners. What happens if you've got a curve and we need to clip into the curve? Let me show you how to do that. Now we've got two different curves here. We've got a concave curve and a convex curve. So we've got the inward facing curve and the outward curve. Now both are slightly different um, where you need to clip them to get a really good result when you're finishing with a product. So we're going to start with the concave curve. So this curve is going inwards. So all you need to do there is get a sharp pair of scissors and we're literally just going to cut in to about say an eighth away, three millimeters away from our stitching. And we can just do, do the little clips at sort of intermittent areas so that it gives it a little bit of movement when that it's turned around. Now, if you had two layers of fabric here, I always tend to do my clips staggered in the layers so that you don't have one area of weakness at any one point. So there we're left with just these little clips going into the curve. So what to do with a convex curve. Now this is slightly different and you can see the little triangles that I've already cut out from the curved edge. So we're going to again clip using a pair of scissors with a sharp point into the seam allowance about one eighth three mil from the stitching line and we're going to cut out a little triangle. You want scissors with a sharp point really so that you can make sure that you are getting the triangle out. And again we can do these at little intermittent variations and you'll find obviously a steeper curve needs more clips than a smoother, um, less steep curve. So just like that. And again, if I had 
two seam allowances here. I would again do these at opposite, you know, in the seam allowance, different seam allowances, so that you're not making a weak point with the two seam allowances at one time. So hopefully this has helped you with your clipping of curves and your cutting of corners. Next, we're going to move on to matching seams. Another tip I wanted to go through with you is how to match up seams. Now I've got two little seams that I've sewn here as an example. Both have been pressed open and I wish to join them like this. But I want this seam to be consistent and match at the join. How do I do that? And more importantly, when would you need to do this? Quilting is a big one. Obviously, when you're quilting something, you really want your seams and joins to match up so that it does look professional um, and really finish as a piece. In terms of a garment, you may need to do it if you had a dart in the bodice that needs to match a dart in the skirt so that you had a line continuing down the body that was even. This can also happen at side seams of a bodice to a skirt. It can also happen very commonly in an underarm seam that comes from a sleeve to the side seam of a bodice. So it's something that you will find that needs to happen and this is a really easy technique that you can use to do that. So what we're going to do is position one on top of the other and we're just going to look at matching them up ourselves first. So I'm really peeking in between the two layers there and I'm laying one seam on top of the other seam as best as I can. Now you will learn sort of to get a feel for this so you will find it easier um, after time than you do to start with but to start we're just going to aim to position them together. We're then going to bring in something called a clover fork pin. Now these were sold for quilting, I believe, originally, but I use them all the time for garments, to sort of home decor pieces, I don't know, wash bags that need to be matched in certain areas, anything that I need to match, this is the little one that I get out of the box. Now we're going to position this. The two little legs need to go either side of the seam that we need to match up. And you want the point of the pin to be going towards the seam allowance so that the bulky end is sitting in the fabric. So, legs either side of the seam, um, bulky end in the fabric, point of the pins going out towards the seam allowance, and you want to make sure that you are putting the pin in around this stitching line mark, so if you're working with 5 8 1.5 centimetres, position it around there because that is the bit that it's going to make sure will match, not before that nor after it. And then we're going to check. We're going to peel open the inside and check and we're completely perfectly matched up. If you weren't, all you would do is reposition it and sometimes you'll have a difficult seam or some difficult fabric and you may need to do it three times, but that doesn't matter because once it's in and we're gonna sew over it in a second, it will match up, I promise. So, one thing to point out before we go to the sewing machine is that you want to make sure ideally that the sort of pointed edge is in line with the edge of the fabric, especially if you're going to be using one of the magnetic seam gauges that we spoke about earlier. You don't want the pin to be creeping over the edge because it will get caught on the magnetic seam gauge. So the clever thing about this is that we're going to sew over it. Now, I've never had a problem hitting this, pi this pin. I believe because you've got the two legs, that the legs find it very easy to sort of jump out of the way um, because the two of them are attached together. Um, and personally, as I said, I use them all the time. I've never had a problem hitting it. Um, however, I wouldn't say that you should sew over pins normally. So just this one. Join me at the machine and we can sew this. So now we're ready at the sewing machine. I've lined up the edge of my fabric with my 1.5 centimeter 5 8 guideline that I've got on my metal plate here. We're going to start as always holding threads, turning the hand wheel to position the needle into the fabric and a backwards and forwards stitch. Okay, now we're going to sew forwards and nice and slowly, and then we're actually going to sew over this pin. Another thing to think about is that this bobbly bit has to be facing up. You cannot have this sort of raised area at the end of the pin that should be in the fabric side, as I mentioned a minute ago, um, it has to be sitting face up. It must not be sitting down and facing down, or even putting this pin underneath the fabric because the machine will not like that. 
and we're just going to be gradually sewing and when we come to the pin we'll just very carefully sew over the pin if you have wide seam allowances make sure the seam allowances are sitting flat on the top and on the bottom you're not catching either of those nicely over the pin and the machine doesn't even seem to be bothered by it all the way to the edge of the fabric or the seam you're working on again backwards and forwards or lock stitch finish with your needle raised lift the foot pull the fabric out twist the hand wheel if needed and cut that off and then you can see here that it's sewn the 5 8 seam allowance happily over that um, clover pin and if I were to take the clover pin out you should find and there you have it there you see the seam perfectly matches up at that middle join point as I said these are a fabulous tool and something I would really recommend if you're getting into doing sewing because it can make something that actually is quite difficult to do very very easy and therefore have a great finish and professional results to it next we're going to look at pressing so join me back here so we can get started So we're now on to the final aspect of our five day tutorial and the final aspect is pressing which is really one of the most important bits that you need to do and that you need to keep on top of when you're making garments and projects. It really will give you a much better finished result if you press than if you don't. So how are we going to go about doing this? Well I'm going to start by trimming any little threads get them all out of the way with a sharp pair of scissors and keep on top of those as you're sewing because otherwise they can get tied into another area. Next, we're going to press the seam flat. So by flat, I mean not open, just one layer on top of the other. And what this will do is the heat and steam will help to allow the stitches to sit and shrink, meld them into the fabric so that you'll get a better finished result. So with heat and steam, we're just going to press that nicely, okay? And the idea with pressing really is that you use the weight and the steam to actually sit on top and press the fabric. We're not ironing or giving that ironing motion that you do when you're at home. Okay, now one thing to also think about is the tools that you use when you're pressing. Now, I'm using a little ham here. Um, I would recommend something like a ham. These are filled with sawdust. The reason being is that the sawdust will draw the steam through the fabric and help to set the press. Ham is fantastic for anything that is 3D on the body, so darts, pleats, princess seams, anything that has sort of got the curved nature. On the other side of things, you've got what's called a um, seam roll. Now this is fabulous because it's ever so slightly curved. So when you're pressing a seam flat and open, which is what we're going to do now, it will help to stop the seam allowances embossing onto the right side of the fabric. So we're going to position our seam open and again we're going to give that a press. Now obviously I would recommend that you test your fabric before pressing. Test it, check that the heat of the iron um, and that the temperature and things, the steam doesn't mark your fabric, doesn't damage it. If it does then maybe um, use a pressing cloth, something like a layer of silk or ganza is fabulous and that's what I tend to use because it's see-through. But any pressing cloth would do the job and protect your fabric. So. We've pressed the top bit of this, the bottom bit of this is going to be a little bit more 3D. So we're going to bring our ham back into it and actually use the ham and you can use the edges of the ham to really make sure that you're pressing it flat and nice. Now you tend to want to press your seam allowances open um, in garments or to the back of them, to the back or of, the, of a seam or a project. So work your way around something, pressing it so that it does give a nice finish. And let's have a look at the front of this. It gives a really nice finish to the look of the garment. And that concludes our beginner's crash course in sewing. I really hope that you have enjoyed the five sessions that we've put on, that you've learned something and that you do feel more confident on your sewing machine and with your sewing ability. Please do stay tuned for more videos because we will have more videos, projects, tips and techniques that we want to share with you up very soon. But for now, enjoy your newfound hobby and see you soon.